This is the X-15. It was a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft operated by the United States Air Force and NASA throughout the 60s. Three were built and flew 199 test flights, the last one being on the 24th of October 1968. It was designed to be dropped from underneath the wing of a B-52 and was truly a marvel of engineering. It set all kinds of records that it still holds, including being the fastest aircraft ever built, reaching Mach 7, and exceeding the FAA definition of space, that is, it went higher than 100 kilometres above the Earth. But despite its achievements, what truly interests me are the engines. To achieve their remarkable performance, they ran on a fuel you probably would have never have thought of, and that is ammonia. Now we all know ammonia, it's that really stinky cleaning product, but that is 35% ammonia in water, and of course doesn't burn. But pure ammonia does burn, and it burns into only nitrogen and water, so no CO2, and it's been used as a fuel before. The Belgians used it during the war to supplement their own reducing fuel stocks to run public transport. They put it into buses. And of course the US military looked at deploying ammonia generating plants at the front line so fuel could be produced at the front line rather than having to risk transporting it with all the dangers and costs involved with that. And in 2007, the University of Michigan drove an ammonia fueled car across the USA. It's also a very serious contender for powering large ships and container ships instead of diesel engines. Ammonia is a really interesting material for fuel and fuel transport being relatively inert unless you really go out setting it alight. And there are uh, plans in Australia to create a solar energy farm that uses the energy from the sun to create ammonia and then ship that ammonia to different parts of the world where it can be electrolyzed back into hydrogen and so becomes safe hydrogen transport. But of course, the problem with it is the one that I just mentioned, that you have to work a little bit out it to get it to burn. In fact, you add what's called a promoter. The X-15 promoter was liquid oxygen, but Liquid nitrogen would do exactly the same thing. It only requires 3% addition of hydrogen into the ammonia to make the ammonia burn as quickly as an ordinary fuel. As ammonia isn't a harmless chemical, it's actually pretty nasty. In concentrated form, it will attack zinc and brass and plastics, so you can't put straight into a car. And of course, as a gas, it combines very readily with moisture, including your tears and your lungs, to form ammonium hydroxide, which is incredibly caustic and can give very nasty burns right up until death. So ammonia, or handling ammonia, is one of those things to press that has been left to the experts, mostly because it will meet the greenhouse gas emissions easily without us having to change our energy infrastructure. Because, of course, the bulk of our energy infrastructure at the moment consists of burning hydrocarbons. If we can use those hydrocarbons as a small percentage into ammonia to burn the ammonia, then we can reduce emissions without having to spend massively on the infrastructure for the energy generation that we've got. And when you put those two things together, of course, it means that it's been confined to heavy industry, big power generation and shipping, that sort of thing. And of course, there's an awful lot of research and pilots going into looking at exactly this task because of the benefits of ammonia. But of course, ammonia can be burned in an internal combustion engine. It's been shown by the Belgians and by the um, University of Michigan and a whole host of other people. The issues around ammonia and ammonia use are to do with the dangers of ammonia. But because danger is one of those relative things, I mean, without a doubt, filling your car up with a highly explosive mixture and dashing around at 70 miles an hour is not the safest of things to do, but we do it readily because we're used to doing it. If we can adapt that so we have the same safety with ammonia, then running ammonia on an internal combustion engine is a very doable thing because they will run an internal combustion engine. 
Now with all of that in mind, it was perhaps only a matter of time before somebody brought out a production vehicle using ammonia. And GAC, which is the Chinese state-owned motor manufacturing company in association with Toyota, have done exactly that. They've created a two-litre version saloon. It's four cylinders, 161 brake horsepower, and more significantly claims to reduce emissions of up to 90%, so it's only 10% of an equivalent car. Now, there are issues with ammonia. It's something like a third to half the energy density of hydrocarbons, so you're going to have to have a bigger tank. And it's certainly not the first of its type, but it is the first production vehicle of its type that is set to seriously challenge electric vehicles. What they say is that they've overcome the pain point of ammonia use, whatever that means, because the company is being very close about the engine, which is no real surprise when you think about it. But the demonstrations in Massachusetts and in Iowa and in the trucking companies in Canada is showing that ammonia as a viable alternative fuel is gaining ground rather rapidly on electric vehicles. And ammonia, of course, has an infrastructure already in place for production and distribution. We produce millions of tonnes of it, mostly for fertiliser at the moment, but that infrastructure is already there and could overcome the problems that electric vehicles are having with adoption in terms of range anxiety, the infrastructure for charging points, the way batteries are made and how they're disposed of, all that sort of stuff, and the fire hazards associated with them. So when you read the automotive press, what you'll find is that ammonia cars are being hailed as the likely end of electric vehicles. Now, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it is certainly exciting time to be living in with all these alternative technologies coming forward to deliver power without greenhouse gases. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.